All right, fam. So we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, this video is she hears the gospel and starts to cry. So before we get to the video, man, hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. Follow your boy on all social media platforms down below. Without further ado, all glory to God, man. Let's get it. Let's go. Over you. They want powers over you because God gave everyone to me. Got a question? Uh -huh. Got a question? No, I just don't know why you're speaking. Because I love you. I want you to go to heaven. Huh? I want you to go to heaven. <laughs> well, wait, that's for you. I don't need it. Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah, Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is going to perish. But he, he came to die for your sins so you don't I'm perish. I'm so confused. You, you, you never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before? Like one time. One time? Yeah. What did you hear about it? Huh? What did you hear? When the first time you heard it, what did you hear? Okay. I don't remember, but... Okay, so I'm explaining so, so Jesus, so God sent his son, Jesus, right? Yeah. So Jesus is the, is an express image of God. Why are you here God. right now? It's just spreading, like, God's gospel? Yeah, the love of God, so... Yeah, and, I understand that, but, like, like, my brothers say that God isn't real because, like, scientifically, like, like, he didn't create the earth, and I'm just like, I believe in God. Trust mm -hmm. me, I do believe in God, but my brothers don't, so it's just kind of yeah. weird to me, like, how they can gather all this information about how, like, God created the earth, yeah. but... Sorry. Oh, no, 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 I'm okay. good. <laughs> that's fine, okay, that's fine. I'm good, but, like, it's just crazy, because, like, supposedly we can go to, I don't know, rock or whatever, but, like... God? Yeah. So the Bible says in Genesis 1 1. But I just don't believe it anymore because I used to be like, I used to really, 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 really believe in God. But until mm -hmm. they told me all the information scientifically, like, the earth wasn't really like that, it just grew and I just like kind of lost faith. Yeah, so I'm going to say this. So the Bible says in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And science does back up God. So understand this. If you do research in the early science, like the main scientists that found like a lot of modern science, those scientists believe in God. So a lot of this popular science we have today came from people who believe in God because they believe that they were looking for God's world. And also, believing in God does make sense because guess what? Atheists pretty much say there's no God. They're saying something came from nothing. So yeah. pretty, and But that doesn't make sense. It's, they're saying life comes from non-life. But everything in Earth, you see life comes from life, right? So, but pretty much atheists are saying all this came from nothing. The pretty much just saying you just you just came out of no for no reason. Okay, Everything, so my question is, okay, my question is, mm -hmm. does God believe like in destiny and everything, like everything yeah. is supposed to? So God, God created God. No, God has a destiny for everyone. So destiny is already made out. So could God has a plan for you because God made you. God gave you talents. So God gave you talent to sing or to draw or preach like me. God wants to use one wants you to use that talent for His kingdom. But the devil also knows you have talent. And he would, he would take that talent and make you use it for his kingdom. So that's why a lot of people, they use their the talent. In what way is the difference? So, so the thing is, when, when Satan use your talents, you're dragging people to not know God. And you're dragging people um, to pretty much destruction. So all these rappers, like these rappers, they're going to have a talent for like singing and dancing. But Satan's like, you know what, that's a good talent. I'm going to take him. I'm going to use him for my kingdom. And that's why all these rappers are rapping about like drugs and death and sex. Because it, it, it destroys you. These people, they sell out for fame and money. So the devil gives you temporary things like, you know, fame and sex. And it feels good for a little bit. But in the inside, something just feels wrong. You know, it's just like, well, it's How like. How long have you been doing this for? For like two or three years, for a couple years now. So Jesus Christ saved me because I was, I used to have sex with a lot of random girls. I used to show up my body on Instagram. I used to do all this stuff because this is what the world promotes. This world promotes all you know. Society. Yeah, society promotes yes. it. So the world says it's okay, right? I always, I believe in God too. I didn't, I wasn't an atheist, but I didn't know God. I didn't know him. So when you don't know God, you can still be deceived. So Jesus Christ, he's a, he's a, he's personal. God, God is a personal being. That's, that's why we have personal relationship. Because everything we have comes from God. So God, if you have emotions, God has emotions. God knows, God knows how you feel. That's why God came down and he suffered for us. Because God won't, God can relate to us. But all these other faith gods, you never, you yeah, never. But how do you know he's real? Like, how do you know? Oh, because I had encounters with God. God actually spoke to me one time. And yeah, you can have encounters how, with God how, how, by seeking him. Trying. Okay, you got to seek him. So I, I say cut, cut out sin from your life and focus because you can't really, you can't only see God for only two hours on a Sunday. You got to like spend time with him. You know, when you wake up in the morning, pray. Worship, read the word of God. I mean, obviously you have jobs and stuff, so obviously do what you got to do. But on your spare time, that's good time. That's a good time to, to actually know who God is. 
because a lot of people feel like, well, I go to church, but I don't know God. It's like, well, yeah. well, you can't you can't know God for two hours on a Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, you're just like watching TikTok videos and like, you know. That's the one. That's the one. I'm not gonna keep pausing, y'all, because the video is 16 minutes, and I want to have time to get my thoughts and everything about the video. But that's the one right there, fam. That's the one that people be missing. You cannot just spend time with God on a Sunday and then Monday through Saturday, you like, yeah, party, party, party. Let's get drunk. Let's get tea. That, of course, you're not going to feel God's presence. I mean, you only sp do you spend time with your boyfriend or girlfriend one time out of the week? No, they will. Y'all probably break up. Y'all will break up, bro. Even if y'all alone distance, y'all spend every single day, maybe on FaceTime nonstop. That's the one, bro. He, he got a good point with that one. Doing that. like you can't know God like that. Well, God is always with you. He's always with you. He's always talking to you. God might might push you. Hey, you might read your. You need to read your Bible. He might put in your heart like, hey, you need to pray. But it's up to you or not if you actually do it or not. Yeah, okay, closer the question is, mm -hmm. Amen, brother. How do you stop feeling like pain? So the pain. That's why you get. So Jesus Christ, He bore our burdens. That's why I give your pain like, to Christ. So that's why we pray. Be like, Lord, I feel a certain type of pain in me. Lord, I want to give this pain to you, like heavy burdens. So I used to have a, heavy, a lot of heavy burdens on me. And when I gave, when I came to the cross of Jesus, I let Jesus Christ took my pain, and God gives gave me peace. So Jesus Christ, He's called the Prince of Peace because He gives you peace on the inside and eternally. And when you have the peace on the inside living inside you, the, the problems of the world won't affect you. So it's not that God's going to get away all your problems. Because, no, we, still don't, we don't have problems. I still have problems. But the thing is, if they're not a burden on me, because I know because God has his peace inside me, and I know God's going to He's gonna take care of me. And, and and that's why we have to never, never get life as, as a born-again Christian. So it's not like God's going to make you everything all fine and dandy. Life will be all, no, that's not how it works. That's not reality. Reality is, even when you're born again, you're going to have problems. You're gonna have a lot of people come against you. You're gonna have all types of weird stuff happening. Satan's gonna attack you. But the thing is, you can still go through problems and still have peace in life. So that's why when people can cuss at you, when okay. is the peace gonna come? It's when you submit to God. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the, resist the devil, he will flee from you. And Jesus Christ says, I give you peace. Yeah, but I want it now. Okay. So when it will happen. You wanna say a prayer? Huh? You wanna say a prayer? <laughs> yeah, I pray for you. You can have it right now. I can pray. If you really, if you really want it, you Amen. You can, you can have peace. Look, you can have peace through your pain, because I know Aww. Jesus Christ knows your pain. I used to have a lot of pain too. I used to have a lot of pain because I thought I could do it by myself. I tried, I tried, I tried very hard to try to fix my own pain by myself. So, for instance, if I, because I used to be fat, I used to get bullied for my fatness. So I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna get buff. I'm gonna get ripped because you know, if I'm buff and ripped, no one would ever make fun of me. But I didn't have peace through that. Only Jesus Christ gives you peace, and when He gives you peace on the inside, you're not trying to gratify other people because you're already you're already enough in the eyes of God. So whatever pain you have, I don't know it comes from my childhood or a boyfriend or something like that. That pain, Jesus Christ can take away all that pain, but it comes with obedience and surrender. It's about letting Him. Fuck you have me crying. No, praise God. The thing is, though, the pain you have inside you, Christ was the God. God, He died for that pain. He died to take that pain away from you. Because it wasn't God's intention for you to be in pain. Like, God did not make out of Eve, like, you know what, I'm going to make you be in pain. That wasn't God's plan from the beginning. God's plan was for us to live in eternal peace and joy. And that's why God's going to come back. And that's why God's going to, he's going to make that for the earth. He's going to make our earth full of peace and joy. But you can also have it right now. So you don't have to wait. You can have it right now. But it comes with surrender and obedience. You know why Adam and Eve, um, all this stuff, all this destruction happened? Because they were disobedient. So when you're disobedient, that's when pain comes in. When you say, God, I don't think you know what's so going how do on. I be obedient, then? Well, we really gotta know what we gotta know what obedient means. That's when you gotta read the word of God. Bro, she bro, this is the questions that like, bro, these are amazing, amazing things that she's asking. Like, how do I be obedient? How do I feel the peace? I want the peace now. All these different things. Like, it's still stuff that I ask to this day. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, but the best thing about it, I know the answer now. Because all the answers are in the word of God. The more you read the word of God, you will find the answers you're looking for. How do you be obedient? Jesus Christ tells you. You know what I'm saying? How do you, you know, how do you feel peace? Jesus Christ tells you. The Bible literally tells you the things that you're asking. You know what I'm saying? How do I feel at this? How do I, how do I feel this? How do I feel that? The Bible will give you the answers. You just got to be humble to come to Christ, even, even if you don't want to read the Bible. 
and you just starting out your walk, but you really want you really have these questions and you're not really that great at reading. You feel like oh, I don't want to read it. I'm not I don't like reading. You can pray and you can literally ask the Lord. The Lord knows your heart. You know what I'm saying? The Lord see that you are seeking him. He can, look, the Lord is not going to he's not going to turn his ear to a person that's truly trying to seek him. He's not going to turn his ear from you like he's not. He's listening. His heart is open to hear your grief. His heart is open to hear all the pain that you're facing because he wants you to come to him. Lay all your burdens onto me and I shall give you rest. I'm telling you, the Bible is the key. Because I mean, it's not about just saying like, well, I don't know what to do. That's what, if you read the word of God, you can know what obedience is. You want a Bible? I actually got a free Bible if you want one. It's white. I what if it was that easy? What if it was that easy? Huh? You can. Yeah. So the Bible says we're two or three gathered in his name. He's in the he's there in the midst of us. So God is in the midst of us right now because we're, we're talking about him. So God is here. You can't see him, but he's definitely here with you. And he, he definitely wants to comfort you from all, from all your pain. And he doesn't want to take that pain. He, he wants to he wants to give you peace. He, he wants to give you an everlasting peace right now. So the peace you, you he, the peace you're seeking, he can give that to you from the inside. He can give you true love from the inside. He can heal whatever brokenness, anything that happened in your life. He can heal that. He can heal that. Um, but you have to repent. So all the things, all the pain you hold on to, like unforgiveness or like hatred or bitterness, all that stuff, you have you have to forgive those people and give that pain I up to the Lord. You can. I can't. Oh, forgiving isn't forgetting. That's a yeah, difference. Don't forget. Don't forget. Yeah, but I just have this grudge against them. It's like, I can't. Once you surrender to God, all, right. God, God, God takes that. Yeah, it's his strength. You can't do it alone. Amen. Amen. You're right. You're right. You're right. You, it's not about you doing it alone. So I, I have to forgive people to my parents. I mean, I fought my parents one time. So it's not me being like, oh, I'm strong. I'm going to forgive people. No, it's me saying, God, I need help. I have unforgiveness towards this girl or my parents. I need your strength, God, to, so I can forgive this person. God gives you the love. He gives you enough love so you can actually can forgive people. Because when you're walking in love, you don't, you're not going to have any grudges towards anyone. It doesn't matter what people do. Like Even if someone came up to me and like, spit in my face, I'm not going to have a grudge towards them because I'm full of love. When you're full of God's love inside you, it's like nothing in this world can move you. Like Nothing in this world can really throw you off. Because God is God is a solid rock. God, God is a solid foundation. No, no one's gonna move God or push God. God is a solid rock of just love and just oh, just love. And you're not gonna move God. Have you felt that though? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah. You uh -huh. have to. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. to. You have to decide and make that decision. You're feeling mm -hmm. it right now. Are you with him? Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, he's, he's, pull, he's trying to talk to you. He's trying to draw you in, and he's trying to tell you yeah. that I'm here for you. Said, you're making me cry. He's not making you cry. What's making you cry is you feel inside of you. Is this the word of God? Is the word of God is like a sword that pierces through the heart. It pierces. It does. The, the word of God is it pierces you. And when you, and when you ask him into your heart and into your life, it's not, it, your whole world changes. It does, but it also stays the same. But it's up to you. To follow Jesus Christ and Amen. the Word, Amen. and spread that amongst everybody. What you're feeling now, people, everybody wants to feel Amen. exactly the way you're, you're being tugged at. Amen. This is only a choice for you can make, but Amen. make it for you, and it's between you and God. It's not between you and anybody else. Amen. But when you come to know Jesus, people like this gentleman, me, my wife. We are here to support you no matter where in from or your walk with God daily. And there's you're not alone. Yeah, All you have to do is ask him into your heart. And that's going to be when you're ready, when you want to. When you're ready, you'll turn around. God is standing right there. You will not turn, physically. Not physically, <laughs> but you will turn from your ways to your, the, your walk right now. And you'll turn and walk with God. Amen. He will be in your, he was, he's in your heart and in your soul. You know, a lot of people use that word repent when they talk about God. And it's, it's a fancy word that means turn away. It That's means all that you leave it. You leave all the stuff that you're dealing with. I don't know you, but I love you. God loves you. Amen. And I can say that because I know 100%. So what, are you behind? Huh? Um, 
you can't leave everything behind, but what you do is you move forward mm -hmm. with a different Attitude and, and a different mindset and a different heart. Yeah, but what if it goes back? So the thing is, God. Every single day. That's why the yeah. gentleman told you, you have to wake up with every God. Day. Yeah, so problems are not going to stop. So, but the thing is, God will sometimes lead you to cut off things or, or, or negative in your life. So it could be a bad boyfriend, could be bad friends. Because, I mean, um, was it bad company? Was good, bad company curves good character. Yeah. So, obviously, also, you, when, you, when you're born again, you have the light of Christ. So when you have the light of Christ inside you, you're not going to want to stay around darkness. And also, darkness won't, won't want to stay around you either. You see what I'm saying? Like, for me, instance, like, I don't hang around gang bakers and stuff like that because that's not, I mean, I'm, I'm with Jesus. I mean, I have Jesus living inside me. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean we are void, though. We've got to minister to him and talk to him and stuff. But when it comes to, like, daily, like, hanging out and catching up, when you have the light of Christ inside you, you're not going to want to stay around darkness. Especially when you have the true love and peace living inside you, you're going to want to gravitate people with that same understanding. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Because only we have that understanding because we're actually born again. You know, born again Christians have the Holy Spirit. So th this is why when you're born again, God's going to move you to cut off people. And also, you're going to want to cut off people anyway. Because when you do have peace inside you, when you still hang around those gossip people, you'll be like, man, like, something just feels weird. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I should just be here. Like, you know, life is good, so, man. Like, okay, so basically, <laughs> if, like, the bad people are in your life, right, and you just know you have to let go of them, and... Turn and walk away. Well, you need to. Yeah, but what if it's hard though? Like, the thing is, it is gonna be hard, but God gives. It was God. It was hard for Jesus. <laughs> but God gives you the strength. So it, the thing is, it's not about doing everything by yourself. It, it is hard. Like I was struggling with pornography. That was hard. I, I mean, I tried to do everything by myself. I tried. Um, I don't know, like go, like don't. I don't know, like no fat, something like that. So I tried to do all this stuff. So if you know the person's stuff. bad for you, you just let go. Yes. It, you do, but you have to ask Jesus for strength. You, you have to ask Jesus for strength. You're honest with him. And you gotta forgive him too. But before you, before you, before, don't even think about him. Don't, don't think about that person. Think about Christ first. Think about let's think, one step at a time. So let's think about Christ. Don't, don't try to be like, well, I gotta do this and that and this and that. No, no, no. First, let's, let's get to know who Jesus is and get to know what we need to do for him, for what he can do for our life. And then God will start walking in your life. He'll start telling you things. Um, personal in your life in your life for what you need to do to get over that person but let's not go too fast you know be like oh i gotta do this and that and this like let's let's take it one step at a time because when i first came to christ i was still struggling like it wasn't like a overnight thing like okay i'm just good like, no no it took time for a lot of personal different types of stuff like childhood stuff sexual stuff anger issues like all this stuff god works with you at a different pace god is patient god is gentle so it's not like god be like you gotta change overnight i mean that's not reality. Even God with the children of Israel, God was pulling them out a lot of wicked things too in the past, but it took time. It took it's time. Process. Yeah, it's a process, but it's, it's, also, it's a journey. Because when Paul says you got to finish the race, so we're in a race right now. It's, it's a journey. So don't think you got to do everything like in one day or one night. If not, I just can't do it. No, don't put that pressure. They're going to say those burdens, you need to give those burdens over to Christ. Jesus Christ said, all you are heavy burden, come to me. So all you with all these problems in your life, all this stuff weighing you down, all this unforgiveness, you should go to him and let him guide you out from those problems. Because if you try to do it yourself, you're going to overwhelm yourself, you're going to go crazy, you're going to feel like life is just too much. And that's why Christ came down to bear our burdens. That's why he came down. So Jesus loves you very much. He knows your pain. He suffered. Jesus Christ suffered. God suffered. He bled. So God knows what pain is. That's why we can relate to God. And, and this is why he wants you to be in peace. So God is strong. Where we're weak, you understand, God is still strong. Because we're just human beings. We're in a fallen nature. We don't live long. We're fragile. We get sick every, you know, every two months. Like, we're very fragile. But God is strong. You know, God is eternal. God will never, God will never be moved. So that's why you got to put your faith in the rock, the fortress, which is Jesus Christ. And when you, when you got to stand on him, when you stand on him, you, you will know what peace is. You will know what love is. You will know what all this, um, you know, the fruits of the spirit is when, when you're born again. Does, does that make sense? I know I said a lot. Oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I want to I pray for you. Oh, man. Okay. So, bro, that was amazing. Okay. That was seriously amazing. And fam, I love when people hear the gospel. They get emotional. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I spread the gospel to this girl at my job and I was talking to her and I, I was just talking, you know, I was just spreading the word of God and she just started tearing up and she just got really emotional and I didn't know her story. I didn't know what she'd been through. I don't know none of that. All I did was spread the gospel 
And this goes back to the video I posted yesterday about Bishop Murphy. I'm not coming here to bash him and say, he's this pastor. But what I am saying is, this is what you can do. This is the word. This is the power of the word of God. It can easily, it can easily break somebody just like that in a heartbeat. You see the guy that was preaching this, uh, the channel is, uh, it's not only the box below anyways, but behold truth ministries. You see how the, the, the word of God can just break you down just like that. Make you really rethink life. Make you really think about the things you've been doing. If you know the word of God, it can easily get to somebody just as this. This guy didn't, he didn't play no, on BD, on Trump, he didn't play all that stuff just to bring her closer, just to bring her in. He was spreading the word of God randomly. She came over because God was already touching her heart. God moved her to come over. She cried. She realized that, man, I need to switch up. Man, I need to forgive. Man, I need to do all these different things. But I wanted to, I, I wrote down three, I wrote down four points that I want to cover real quick, but this is a scripture that I uh, just read today, and it's crazy that I watched this video the same day I read this, let's see, this is how the word of God works, you know what I'm saying, so right here in Lamentations 3, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 31 through 33, for no one is abandoned by the Lord forever, though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. Now, she was talking about pain. She was talking about all these different things. And honestly, I'm here to tell you, like, the pain never goes away. When you come to Christ, Christ is our parent. So guess what? We're going to get disciplined. A lot of things we go through is to teach us lessons so we can get through the next season to come. And sometimes the things we go through is it, it, it's a it's, it may be a burden right now, but it's always going to be for the next person because now we can tell the next person what we did to get through to get through the season that they're going through right now. And so they can have some type of confidence that, man, you got through. I know I can get through it. And she also mentioned, um, how do you know God is real? Look up, look in the skies, look, look at the sky and you know that everything needs a creator. So just look up, look up, and, and and also reflect on your life. Think about all of the things that you done been through and that you done survived. We all, some of us had life death experiences, near near death experiences. Some of us had those experiences. Just think about, dang, like I was never supposed to be alive right now. Some of us been through a lot and it's like, yo, I made it through this season. And you may not be following God, but just if you look back at that, you'll be like, yo, God is real. Like, I really should have never made it through that season I was going through, but I did. God is real. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's how you know God is real. She also mentioned um, she can't forgive. Bro, I understand how that feeling is. I had a homeboy, my brother, you know what I'm saying? My dog, my, my ride or die. I'm not as close you know what I'm saying? But I would never forget the things that happened or the things that, you know, that, that he done. You know what I'm saying? I would never forget those things, but I know that I have to forgive. How I know that I'm forgiving people is because even when they come up to me and talk to me, even though I remember the things they did, I forgive them and I'm still going to have a conversation with them. I'm not going to forget it, but I will always forgive them because the love that ha the love that God has placed inside of me, the Holy Spirit, the level of peace that I have through the pain that I go through. I, I mean, seriously, I sit there and I forgive people and people think, <clears throat> man, Jalen, you let people walk over. You let people do it's like, no, God has put a level of peace in me that I don't give people the time of day. So it's not them walking over me because they're not physically abusing me. They're not physically destroying me. They may mentally say certain things that may hurt me. They may, they may, you know, the words they may say hurt, but at the end of the day, they may kick dirt on me. They may do all these different things, but they did that to Jesus. They did that to Paul. They did that to all the disciples. Half of the disciples, well, I think all the disciples, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe not, just not one. I believe it was all disciples besides one that died crucial deaths for spreading the word of God. So, I mean, this is, this is what it comes with. People don't like truth. It's hard to believe truth in a world full of lies. You see what I'm saying? And then <clears throat> the last point she mentioned is what if it's hard? What if it's hard to forgive? What if it's hard to let go? What if it's hard? What if it comes back? You get into prayer. 
The Bible say pray without ceasing. Pray each and every day without ceasing. That means pray without stopping. Don't stop praying. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for that brother. Continue to pray for that person that, that molested you. Continue to pray for that person that, that, that treated you wrong. Continue to pray for them without ceasing. Pray, 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 pray. Prayer is very, very efficient. 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 <laughs> Continue to pray. Look, I, I don't know her story and I don't know what she been through, but man, Jesus is good. God is good, bro. I had to sit back and I had to reflect on that junk. Like, man, I've been, I, I done, God done got me through a lot, a lot. And, and I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like certain things we don't realize what God got us through because we too focused on what he hasn't done instead of focus on what he has done. He done a lot in our lives, but we so focused on what he has not done just yet. And so we miss what he have done. And that's me. I'd be so focused on what God has not done. Oh, Lord, I'm not famous yet. Well, not famous. I don't want to be famous. <laughs> but, Lord, I'm not, you know, my business is not growing. Lord, I'm, I'm struggling financially. Lord, I'm this. Lord, I'm that. I prayed about this, Lord, and it hasn't happened. But yet, God done got you through a situation where you almost could have died. But yet, God done blessed you enough to be able to afford all your bills and you may be living off $30, but hey, all your bills paid. You know what I'm saying? Car note paid, rent paid, insurance paid. I'm just saying. God is good, bro. We got to understand and realize his grace. And people need to really feel the presence of God. Some people need to feel it. But let me tell you this. Sometimes you're not going to always feel the presence of God. It be situations where I don't feel the presence of God. But because I have a wall full of scriptures, I have a lot of scriptures in this room. This is my office. But then not only that, you just got to go to the word of God and, and, and read the certain and read the things he has said. Read the thing. Greatest is faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each each morning. Fear not for I am with you. Isaiah 41 10. I mean, you just got to you just got to realize these things and believe it in your heart. Believe it. Say it and believe it and receive it. That's what you got to do. I love y'all, man. I'm finna get off this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. Be your boy, The Pant. Enjoy y'all Sunday. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.